In this lecture, we will understand how to calculate the average power of a discrete time signal and we will also see the condition for a discrete time signal to be a power signal. But first, we will quickly revise the formulas we are having to calculate the average power of a continuous time signal. And let's say the continuous time signal we are having is xt, then we will have two formulas to calculate the average power of xt and the formula we will choose will depend on the type of signal xt. If signal xt is a periodic signal then the formula of average power p is equal to 1 over t0 where t0 is the fundamental time period integration over t0 mod xt whole square dt and we will choose this formula when the continuous time signal xt is periodic in nature. Now when xt is non-periodic then we will have another formula and we have already seen that formula according to that formula the average power p will be equal to limit t tending to infinity 1 over t integration from minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 mod xt whole square dt and we will use this formula when the continuous time signal xt is non-periodic. We have seen all these things in the continuous time signals chapter. We have also solved many examples using the formulas and we have all the concepts clear related to the continuous time power signals and the calculation of average power of a continuous time signal. This is just a revision and using these two formulas we will obtain the two formulas for the calculation of average power of discrete time signal xn. We will simply modify the two formulas and we will have the formulas for xn. When xn is periodic the average power p will be equal to 1 over n summation n equal to n mod xn square and we will use this formula when the discrete time signal xn is periodic in nature and if you compare this formula and this formula you will find in place of t0 which is the fundamental time period of signal xt when it is periodic we have n and we know n is the fundamental period of signal xn when it is periodic and we are performing the summation over n. Here we are performing the integration over t0 and we know in case of discrete time signals we perform the summation and not integration. Therefore we have summation in place of integration and then in place of xt we have xn. Now we will move on to the next formula which we will use when xn is non-periodic. We will have limit n tending to infinity. In place of t we will have n limit n tending to infinity. Now here I want to make one thing very clear. This t is not the period. Signal xt is non-periodic therefore there is no doubt that t is not a time period. t is a time duration which we choose according to the transition in the signal values. We have seen the examples in which we have selected minus t by 2 and t by 2 according to the transition in the signal values. Similarly, here in this case n is not the fundamental time period or any other time period. Then we have 1 over t but here we will have 1 over 2n plus 1. 
I will explain how we are having 1 over 2n plus 1 then we have summation because here we have integration and we will perform the summation from n equal to minus n to n equal to plus n then we will have mod xn whole square and this formula we will use when the discrete time signal is non periodic now let's understand how we are having 1 over 2n plus 1 and for that we will understand how we are having 1 over t in this case you can see that we are performing the integration from minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 so the total duration will be t by 2 t by 2 minus minus t by 2 and this will give us t therefore we will divide this by t and thus we are writing 1 over t here in this case we are performing the summation from minus n to n therefore we will have n minus minus n and this will give us twice of n but we are having twice of n plus 1 plus 1 is there because from minus n to n we will also have 0 and therefore this 1 is reflecting 0 and therefore we are dividing this by 2n plus 1 and we are dividing by 2n plus 1 or we are multiplying by 1 over 2n plus 1 because we are calculating the average power and we know how to calculate the average values all these things we have discussed in the earlier lectures and therefore I will not go into detail and this is all for the two formulas we need to calculate the average power of a discrete time signal now let's move on to the next point that is discrete time power signals we know a signal is said to be power signal when the average power is finite when the average power is finite this means the average power is less than infinity but greater than zero and we have seen when the average power is finite the total energy is infinity therefore whenever the average power is finite then we will say that the given continuous time signal or the discrete time signal is a power signal so this is the condition for a signal to be power signal remember this condition and now we will solve one example in this example the discrete time signal xn is equal to cos pi by 2n and we are required to calculate the average power of signal xn and uh, we know the sinusoidal signals which are discrete in nature may or may not be periodic and it is important to have the idea that whether xn is periodic or non-periodic because we need to choose one out of these two formulas and therefore we will first check whether the given discrete time signal xn cos pi by 2n is periodic or non-periodic if in place of cos pi by 2n we have a continuous time signal xt equal to cos pi by 2t then this signal is always periodic this is always periodic and therefore we can directly use this formula but in case of discrete time signals the sinusoidal signals may or may not be periodic and we are always required to check whether it is periodic or non-periodic and we have seen how to check whether the given sinusoidal signal is periodic or aperiodic we simply need to check whether 2 pi by omega naught is giving us the rational value or the irrational value if the result is rational value then the given sinusoidal signal is periodic and if the result is irrational then the given sinusoidal signal is non-periodic we can find out omega naught from here it is equal to pi by 2 therefore 2 pi divided by omega naught will be equal to 2 pi divided by pi by 2 
which will give us 4 and 4 is definitely rational value. This implies the discrete time signal xn we are having is a periodic signal and therefore we will use this formula. So let's quickly move on to the calculation of average power p. It is equal to 1 over n and we can calculate n which is the fundamental time period is equal to 2 pi divided by omega naught multiplied to k. This implies n is equal to 4 because 2 pi divided by omega naught is equal to 4 multiplied to k. k is an integer value and to get the fundamental time period k should be 1 therefore n is equal to 4. So we have 1 over 4 then we have summation and we need to perform the summation over the fundamental time period. So we will start from n equal to 0 and we will end at n equal to 3. In this way we are having the 4 integer values and hence we are performing the summation over the fundamental time period 4. And we know the signal we are having is cos pi by 2n. So we have mod cos pi by 2 and square. Now let's quickly put the different values of n. We have 1 over 4 inside the bracket. When n is equal to 0, we will have mod cos 0 square plus when n is equal to 1, we will have mod cos pi by 2 square plus when n is equal to 2, we will have mod cos pi square and when n is equal to 3, we will have mod cos 3 pi by 2 square. Now when you solve this, you will get the average power equal to 1 by 2 and this is the answer. And the unit of power will be watts. So this is all for this lecture. See you in the next one.